fellow Lexophiles, this is Elizabeth at the Ashland Branch Library, and it's time for another poetry break. Today, I've chosen poems around the theme of summer. I hope you enjoy them. Our first one is called Lines of Force by Thomas Centilella. The pleasure of walking a long time on the mountain without seeing a human being, much less speaking to one and the pleasure of speaking when one is suddenly there. The upgrade from wary to tolerant to convivial, so unlike two brisk bodies on a busy street for whom a sudden magnetic attraction is a mistake, awkwardness, something to be sorry for. But to loiter, however briefly, in a clearing where two paths intersect in the matrix of chance, to stop here, speaking the few words that come to mind. A greeting, some earnest talk of the weather, a little history of the day. To stand there then and say nothing, to look slowly around past each other, notice the green tang pines exude in the heat and the denser sweat of human effort to have nothing left to say, but not wanting just yet to move on. The tension between you, a gossamer thread. It trembles in the breeze, holding the thin light it transmits. To be held in that line of force, however briefly, as if it were all that mattered, and then to move on with equal energy, with equal pleasure. Our next one is called County Fair by Mary Carr. On the mud road of plodding American bodies, my son wove like an antelope from stall to stall and want to want. I noticed it all, the wind-up killer robot and winged alien, knives hierarchical in a glass cave, the blow-up vinyl wolf bobbing from a pilgrim's staff. Lured as I was by the barbecue's black smoke, I got in line. A hog carcass, blistered pink on a spit, made its agonized slow roll. A metaphor, I thought, for anyone ahead of me, the pasty-faced and broad. I half longed for the titanium blade I'd just seen curved like a falcon's claw. Some truth wanted cutting in my neighbor's impermanent flesh, or so my poisoned soul announced, as if scorn for the, body, for the body politic weren't some outward form of inner scorn, as if I were fit judge. Lucky my son found the bumper cars. Once I'd hoped only to stand tall enough to drive my own. Now, when the master switch got thrown, and sparks skittered overhead in a lightning web, I felt like Frankenstein or some newly powered monster. Plus, the floor was glossy as ice. Even the rammed head-on, even rammed head-on, the rubber bumper bounced you off unhurt and into other folks who didn't mind the jolt, whose faces all broke smiles. In fact, till the perfect figure eight I started to execute, became itself an interruption. One face after another wheeled shining at me from the dark, each bearing the weight of a whole self. What pure vessels we are, I thought, once our skulls shut up their nasty talk. We drove home past corn at full tassel, colossal silos, a windmill sentinel. Summer was starting. My son's body slumped like a grain sack against mine. My chest was all thunder. On the purple sky in rear view, fireworks unpacked. Silver chrysanthemum, another in fuchsia, then plum. Each staccato boom shook the night. My son jerked in his sleep. I prayed hard to keep the frail peace we hurtled through to want no more than what we had. 
the road rushed under us. Our lush planet heaved towards day. Inside my hand's flesh, anybody's skeleton gripped the wheel. Our next poem is called Card 19, The Sun by Brenda Shaughnessy. When you show yourself to the woman you love, you don't know your fear is not fear itself. You have never been good, but now you are so good. Who are you? Is it the liquidity of her skin that bathes the world for you? Or her face captured like a she lion in your own flesh? This summer bed is soft with ring upon ring upon ring of wedding. The kind that doesn't clink upon contact. The kind with no contract. The kind in which the gold is only, only light. Clouds cover and lifts and sleep and night and soon enough loves Big fire laughs at a terrible burn, but only, only because pain absorbs excess joy and you shouldn't flaunt your treasures in front of all of the day's eyes. Our next poem is called At the Beach by Elizabeth Alexander. Looking at the photograph is somehow not unbearable. My friends, two dead, one low on T cells, his white t-shirt and x-ray screen for the virus, which I imagine as a single swimming paisley, a sardine with serrated fins and a neon spine. I'm on a train thinking about my friends and watching two women talk in sign language. I feel the energy and heft their talk generates, the weight of their words in the air, the same heft as your presence in this picture. Boys, the volume of late summer air at the beach. Did you tea dance that day? Write poems in the sunlight, vamp with strangers. There is sun under your skin, like the gold Sula found beneath Ajax's black. I calibrate the weight of your beautiful bones, the weight of your elbow, Melvin, on Daryl's brown shoulder. And our last poem today is called All Summer Long by Carol Frost. The dogs eat hoof slivers and lie under the porch. A strand of human hair hangs strangely from a fruit tree, like a cry in the throat. The sky is clay for the child who is past being tired, who wanders in waist deep grasses. Gnats rise in a vapor in a long mounting wind around her forehead and ears. The sun is an indistinct moon. Frail sticks of grass poke her ankles and a wet froth of spiders touches her legs like wet fingers. The musk and smell of air are as hot as the savory, terrible exhales from a tired horse. The parents are sleeping all afternoon and no one explains the long, uneasy afternoons. She hears their combined breathing and swallowing salivas and sees their sides rising and falling like the sides of horses in the hot pasture. At evening, a breeze dries and crumbles the sky and the clouds float like undershirts and cotton dresses on a clothesline. Horses rock to their feet and race or graze. Parents open their shutters and call the lonely, happy child home. The child who hates silences talks and talks of cicadas and the manes of horses. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the poems I picked out and I will see you next month.